Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. In this video, I will show you some tricks and tips that I've been using to make this announcement video. This new rigging course was released on the 1st of November and so far it has been a great success. If you missed it and you want to learn rigging in Blender, just check the description below. Before I even started production, I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted to do regarding the atmosphere and the environment. I wanted some kind of Japanese shrine where our character was praying the gods of rigging. To create the shrine statue, I've been using a blender bone as a reference. I've remodeled it, I've slightly modified the proportion so that it looked better to my taste. Then to engrave the runes in symbol, I've unwrapped the model and then I've made sure that the UVs were overlapping one on top of each other. In Illustrator, I've drawn the pattern on the UVs and also added some of Blender 2.8 official icons. Maybe some of you have spotted that the symbols engraved on the shrine are currently some constraint icon and icons related to rigging in Blender. I've then subdivided the model a bunch, added a multi-resolution modifier and then a displacement modifier using the exported drawing I've done in Illustrator. I've also made some basic modeling for the lamps and the shrine altar. Build some stone, exported everything to ZBrush and then add a pass of sculpting using a lot of trim dynamic and whole brushes to create cracks and stone shapes. Then these sculpts were decimated and sent back to Blender where I've done a retopology, unwrapped them and baked the normal map, AO, etc. I've then combined those with a simple tileable stone texture and then I've used the position node to create a wet map based on the global z-axis meaning that the closer we get to the water, the glossiest and the sharper are the reflections, so it seems to be wet. To make the water surface blending with the horizon, I've used a gradient texture with a radial pattern. I've also rapidly hand painted a mask to add a roughness to the water around the contact area with the stones. To light my scene, I mainly rely on HDRI from HDRI Heaven. I always use HDRI Heaven, HDRI because they are the best HDRI, so if you like HDRI, just go to HDRI Heaven. That's a lot of HDRI. I'm then combining it with a dark background and a camera ray path that is subtracted so that I can dial the amount of energy captured by the camera. To make the water surface animation, since I didn't know how to do it, I've asked a friend. Yes, you can do it, this is a great technique. Just find a friend that knows how to use dynamic painting and gently ask him to do it. Or you can threaten him and his family to get what you need. After short negotiation, he will create proxy meshes of the stone and animate them, inflating and deflating. This will affect a subdivided mesh that had a dynamic paint set to wave with a bunch of settings that I don't understand. I advise you to harass this guy on Twitter so that he produces some tutorials because he knows a bunch of stuff but is too shy and too busy to produce those tutorials while I'm asking him to do so every day. To make the small flames that are in the lamp or the sprites, I've used a simple animated shader. This is a pair of noise textures that are combined and their coordinates are animated using the hashtag frame multiplied by a value. This will create a driver that is frame based. Whenever you're playing the animation, it will input a value based on the frame you're playing. Then those noise textures are also mixed with a gradient texture to drive a transparency mask and animation shader onto an alpha blend shader. Then the effect is enhanced by the bloom in EV and finally the mesh is slightly displaced using an animated empty as texture coordinate and a displacement modifier. 
For the sprites, I've used the same technique and just modified the color and add some rigging icons on the plane. To make the bird, I was fully influenced by Jan Herbert lazy tutorials, which are awesome. While I'm trying to teach you the way of effective rigging, he does know how to make 3D effectively. So I just took a creative common picture of a heron. Then I've just symmetrized it inside of Photoshop. I then created a flat mesh inside of Blender, rigged it, and then created an animation loop of the bird flying. I've then bound this animation to a curve and a path animation that I've been modifying depending on the different shots. Then I've animated my character, but I won't show you how I did it because it's a secret. But I've mostly been moving bones that were made in this awesome rigging course. The explosion effect was made using a simple point lamp that was increasing in intensity while the HDRI was lowering in intensities, allowing me to get a very nice contrast between the bright light and the darkened environment. Then the shock waves are simple animated sphere with an emission shader combined with transparency as usual. And the energy rays are simple cylinders also animated using an emission shader. Then I've added another sphere that was animated and then used particles to drive an explode modifier and destroy the stones where our character is sitting. The tricky part was to give the emitted particle a good shape so I've used a force field to do so. I've then rendered every sequence using EV, composed them in After Effects, adding some color grading and some lens flare effects. Then in addition, added a bit of flute, a bit of and a bit of and then combine everything and export it as a video that will promote this new rigging course that is now available on Gumroad, Blender Market, ArtStation, Flip Normal and CubeBrush, where you will learn the way of effective rigging inside of Blender. See you!